Hello everyone, my name is Jordan and welcome back to the very first video of 2019. Uh, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at building out a note-taking application for the iPhone and Swift. We're going to be looking at specifically how to store, retrieve, and delete data using the Realm database. And we'll get into exactly what that is uh, a little bit down the line here. Uh, hopefully, uh, over the next couple weeks here, we're going to be publishing some more videos uh, using this note-taking application to show you things about uh, CloudKit, Siri shortcuts, other iPhone and iOS specific features. Um, so you can learn exactly how to build a great application for iOS and for the iPhone. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's also a written version of it down in the description below as an article format if you'd like. And make sure to download the starter project as well linked in, in the description if you'd like to follow along and write the code with me. Other than that, I hope you all enjoy this video. Happy New Year and take care. So let's take a look at our application. Uh, first off, we have our initial screen here. We have a table view of notes. We can tap into this and start editing our note. So let's say this is a new line. And we can hit done, go back out. Uh, notice nothing saves yet. This is just a note that we create every single time we need it. So we need to figure out how to save notes and how to retrieve notes. Uh, this compose button does pretty much the same thing. We also have a delete button, so we can go and in the future we'll be able to delete notes. Of course, nothing happens now. So how are we going to store and retrieve data? Well, uh, we're going to use, as I said before, a library called Realm. Now, you could use a different tool to, um, to accomplish this, such as Core Data, which is a framework built into iOS. I prefer Realm because I think it's a little more straightforward than Core Data. So that's what we'll be using in this video. Of course, the solution that I'm about to show you um, can really be done any way you want, and I've abstracted it enough in the starter project, which you can find in the description below. Uh, I've, I've abstracted everything enough, so it should be pretty easy to start storing and retrieving uh, notes from the system. So, how do we get started? Well, I have a folder here called Notes App Episode 1, and I also have a terminal window in the same spot. And to get started, we need to install the Realm library. So to do that, we just need to create a new pod file. And if you've never used a thing called CocoaPods before, uh, you can find the link down in the description to learn all about what that is. Uh, it's essentially a dependency uh, manager. So uh, we can add different libraries to our project with it, such as Realm in this instance. So uh, as soon as we type in pod in it into our console here inside of this folder, we get this pod file generated. We can type in open pod file in terminal to open it up. And I will quickly size this text up. So we have our target here. I'm just going to delete everything uh, that we really don't need here. Oops. Uh, we do want this one. We want to set this to 12, iOS 12. And I'll remove all of our uh, comments here just to make this nice and simple. So uh, right here where it says hashtag pods for notes app, we can just type in pod, make sure it's lowercase, and then we want to say realm. And then we want to put a comma, another thing here with a tilde. And we can then say 3.12.0. That is the latest version of Realm at the time of writing or recording this video. We also want to copy that line and paste it again and also do Realm Swift. Uh, there's two libraries. If you're using Realm with uh, the Swift language, you have to do Realm and Realm Swift. If you're using Objective-C, I don't think this is the case. So unless you are interacting with Swift in some way, then I would include Realm Swift. So with that out of the way, we can close out of that and go back to terminal and type in pod install. This will download, uh, or if you have them already, uh, just grab the Realm and Realm Swift libraries and put them in your application. Now I have this uh, project open here, uh, this Xcode project. If you have it open um, as well, you wanna close out of that and start using this XC workspace file. So I'm gonna gloss over a few things that I think are important uh, to know about our application. So the way we store data is by using this note class. It has three basic properties, identifier, content, and last edited. We have identifier, which is a string, content is also a string, and we have last edited, which is a date. Identifier is generated using a random identifier here, and date is just uh, the current date. And of course, we can pass these in um, later as we create and store note objects. Um, we also have this extension for note that subclasses this writable protocol. And this uh, has two functions, write and delete, and they have a data source parameter. Inside of write, we change the last edited property. So whenever we write to our database, 
Um, we make sure that that property is always up to date. And then we call the store function on the database, which passes in um, a object of type self, which is just the note we're talking about here. Uh, delete is pretty, more, pretty much the same deal except with delete, and it passes in the same object of self. Let's take a look at the data source protocol here. You see we have our store and delete functions. These use generic, so we can pass in any object um, and it'll work fine. Let's look at writable now. Writable just uh, has the write and delete functions with the data source input. Now we have this thing called note data source, which is actually where we uh, subclass data source. And you see we have our store and delete functions and we make sure to check that we're dealing with note objects. Uh, just in case we, um, we get past an object that isn't a note, um, it's not going to be processed here. So you can see we also have a notes property and this just returns a uh, note here that we pre-generated. We also have an empty initializer. And one thing I also want to note is that inside of store and delete, whenever the data source changes essentially, we send out a notification called note data change that's set up here. And where we receive that would be in notes view controller. If we scroll down here, you see we have our notes and update function, which I've set up as uh, the selector for our observer here. So whenever the note data changes, we get this notes did update function called, and this just reloads our table view and also prints this message to the console. So we know uh, and can confirm as the developer that we're receiving those notifications properly. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it for, um, for our data layer. One quick thing to note about our note table cell we have a property called notes. So whenever we DQ a cell, we set this note property and we have our title label here and we go ahead and take the notes content. So we don't have a dedicated title field. We just take the content of the note and we make sure to get the first line by using the split separator. And then we get the first uh, item in that uh, array that we just create with the split function with the subtitle where it says edited on. If I go look at it here, uh, you can see it's, just using this date formatter, which formats the last edited date uh, property of our note. And we use date and time styles here so that we don't have to explicitly give um, the date formatter a month, day, year format. Uh, this ensures that when we go to localize our app, if we ever want to, we don't have to mess around with dates or change anything. Uh, so pretty ideal. One last thing about this class is with dynamic type, we use our UI font uh, preferred uh, font for text style here. Um, this is a function on UI font. We also set up the adjust font size or adjust font for content size category. We set that to true. And I think that is essentially all we want to know about our interface and our model. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I want to make sure I'm on the right simulator here and I'm going to go ahead and build our application. Now, the first time you install a library, uh, especially one as big as realm, it's going to have to compile that library and it might take some time. So, uh, while this is compiling here, we can go ahead and create a new class as we wait for Realm to compile. We want to call this Realm Note. Whoops, Realm Note. We're going to put this in our model folder. You see, I just right clicked on model. And we now have our class. Okay, so now that we're in this file, we want to import Realm Swift and create a new class called Realm Note, which is going to be a subclass of object. This is a property of Realm, uh, and this just tells Realm that uh, we're dealing with a Realm database object. Now, in order to create a property in Realm, uh, we need to say objective or add objective C or OB, OBJC dynamic variable identifier. This will be of type string, and by default, it's equal to an empty string here. We're going to do the same with objective C dynamic var content, which will be a string as well. It'll also be empty. And we do the same thing finally with last edited, which will be a date equal to the current date. And don't mind uh, these issues here. It's just because we're compiling and editing our file at the same time. There's one last thing to do before we can begin using our realm note object. We need to override the class function called primary key, which returns a optional string here. And inside of this, we want to return a string with the content of identifier. Now, I want to, you to take note here. We're not passing the value of, of the identifier property. We're passing the name of the property itself. 
Uh, we're not telling Realm that the primary key is whatever value identifier is. We're saying identifier as the property is our primary key of this class. All right, one last thing before we can uh, begin retrieving, storing, and deleting notes. We need to uh, go ahead and tell our system or tell our application how to transfer Realm notes to notes because we have two different objects here that we need to uh, transfer. So inside of the Realm note.swift file, we're going to make an extension called Realm note. Uh, you could put this code in one file that I'm about to show you. I'm going to do this so that each extension belongs to the uh, file it's in. We're going to do pretty much the same thing in uh, both Realm note and note here, and we'll see what I mean by that as we get going here. We're going to want to create a convenience initializer, which takes in a note property and then calls the super.init function of object uh, with just no parameters. We don't need them. Now we need to say, oops, we need to say self.init, not super. So self.init. Now we want to set up all our properties. So we want to say self.identifier is note.identifier. Same thing with content. And as well, same thing with last edited. Pretty self explanatory. Then to end this class off here, we want to create a variable called note, and it'll be a note type. And inside of this, we're just going to return a new note that takes in a realm note, and we'll pass in the object we're currently working with. Now let's head over to note and do much the same here. So I will create an extension here called realm, oh, <laughs> an extension of note, and I will say convenience initializer from a realm note, and I will say self.init. This is a little bit different from realm notes initializer uh, because in order to create a note, we have to use our initializer we've created here. There is no empty one we can use. And I'll just pass in those same properties. So realm note dot content identifier and of course last edited. Perfect. And I will finally create a realm note property much like we did in the realm note extension. To get a note, we'll do the same so we can access the realm note uh, of a note by using that notes class. Perfect. So we are now ready to begin storing and retrieving data in our note data source. Now, one thing I want to note before we start writing this out, uh, the notes write function and delete functions, uh, both of those are used inside of the note detail controller. Um, we're not going to actually write that code now. It's already been done for you in the starter project. If you like to look over and see how that works, you can, but it's pretty self-explanatory um, for any application. What I want to focus on for this video is how to actually store, retrieve, and delete objects from the Realm database itself. So we have our Realm note object, and we uh, can bridge it to a node object. Now we actually have to retrieve it from a Realm database. So inside of our node data source, we want to create a new variable called Realm and it'll be of type realm. And inside of an, our initializer, we want to say self.realm equals try with an optional, or try with a bang operator, actually, and a new realm object. So we now have our realm database usable here and all. Whoops. You know what? I forgot to import realm swift. <laughs> Make sure we do that. There we go. Perfect. And now let's go ahead and store and delete our object. So inside of store, we can just say try with an optional self.realm.write, and this is going to create a new code block here, self.realm.add, and it'll take an object and an update uh, boolean here. We want to say note.realm note, and update will be true. So uh, the way the note.realm note property works, if we actually open it up, is you see it creates a new realm note every single time we access the property. Now. This is okay to use in our note data sources case because we have this update uh, true here. Uh, and, and it'll become more clear what I mean by this in just a moment here, as soon as we write our delete function. So the way this add method works on, on the realm database object is we pass in this realm note and it has this primary key called identifier. And this is, should be unique across all of your realm note objects. If it's not unique, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> um, this is handled for you by our note objects. So you don't have to worry about that in this case, but when you go ahead and build your own applications, you will want to factor this into account. So realm database, we pass it this new realm that we've created and we pass in this update parameter, which is true. And so this will tell the realm database, okay, find this existing object. If it exists, update it. If it doesn't, just go ahead and create one. Um, so that's why this one works. And this is also why Inside of delete, we are not going to be using this note.realm note property because if we do that, 
it's not going to work. It's going to crash and burn. We don't want that. So we need to go ahead and fetch a new one from a realm database, a new realm note. So we want to say if let realm note equals self dot realm dot object of type for primary key is the one we want. Our type is realm, whoops, realm note not self. And our primary key is our notes identifier value here. So now we should have our realm note, which we do. And we can now go ahead and delete our object here. Now we have to do this different than we uh, wrote it because for some reason realm is not happy when you uh, use the right function to delete objects. I'm not sure why. <laughs> um, I think I might have done something weird or installed it uh, in a funny way. But uh, to delete objects, we just need to call the begin write function on realm. Then we need to say delete and pass in our realm node object and then try optional self.realm.commit write. So we begin our write, we delete our object, and we commit our write. So that is storing and retrieving objects out of the way. Now, if we were to run this now, I don't know why the simulator is wrong there. If we were to run this now, um, we would not see our notes reflected. And that's because up here, this is the note list that's accessed. We're never retrieving our data. So we've written our data, we've edited and deleted our data. Um, now we need to fetch it from the database. So we're going to delete this uh, uh, initializer for notes here. And inside of it, we want to write let objects equals uh, realm dot object of type. Whoops. We don't want object. We want objects of type realm note dot self. We also want to pass in sorted. Whoops. Sorted by key path and ascending. We want both those properties. Key path will be last edited and ascending will be false. So now we have our realm objects and they're sorted by the time they were last edited. So uh, whenever a note's edited, it will go to the top of our UI. We want to now return objects and you'll notice that objects is a result of realm note type. Of course, note, our note array here is not that. So we need to convert between them. So all we want to do is say note our objects.map inside of this code block. We just want to say return dollar zero dot note. Dollar zero is the current object we're iterating over and it's of type realm note. So we have, of course, that note property there that we can access and then return. If we've done our job correctly here, we should now be able to use our application and store and retrieve data. And there might be some notes in here already from when I was testing this before. Yep, so I've got some notes here. I'm going to delete them real quick. And now we can go ahead and start typing our note out. So this is, oops, this is my note. I will hit done there. There we go, it works fine. Uh, this separator line is something I keep forgetting to fix. So inside of notes view controller, when we create our table view, we can just set the separator style property to none. And we can create a new note here and maybe even back out of editing it. We don't want that. And let's just go in and out of this a couple times. That's fine. Eh, maybe I don't want this anymore. Deleted. And just to test real quick, we can still do this. We can have multiple notes in here. Whoops, test two. They're sorted by the last time they were edited. Um, yeah, perfect. So we've got our application working and we are now storing, retrieving and deleting objects uh, with the Realm database. Now, uh, if you'd like to use a different type of database, say core data or even, I don't know, user defaults, uh, inside of this note data source, you can just do your own code in here. It's pretty self-explanatory. We, inside of this, you fetch your objects, inside of store you save, and inside of delete you delete. So uh, you can figure out what your respective library or tool uh, uses um, to delete, store, and retrieve objects, and go from there. It should be um, pretty self-explanatory. I've tried to make this as easy to follow with as possible. Now, if you'd like, uh, all of this code uh, from the finished product is going to be available in the description below at a GitHub link. Uh, there's also going to be a written version of this tutorial on uh, dev.2. So if you'd like to read that instead of watch this video, or you'd like to refer that to someone, uh, feel free. Uh, other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope to evolve this app a little bit further, maybe build in some cloud kit support so you can uh, have your notes on multiple devices, maybe image support. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see in the comments, maybe specific things you'd like to learn about um, using Swift and iOS uh, maybe even macOS if we get there. 
Um, yeah, that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And if you loved it, make sure to subscribe. Other than that, take care.